Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here again with PA Creative with another Divi tutorial. So today I am going to show you how to hack that pesky search module. So for years I've just hated the search module. It's not easy to customize and it still isn't. There's a couple of things that I just really would like to do, like separate the input field and the button. I'm going to show you how to do that. It takes a little bit of CSS, but you're going to see that it's really easy. You can just use my snippets and um, we're just going to show you how you can create this search module and customize it in Divi. And I think you're going to really like it. And you can even build a search results page with a theme builder. So I'll throw that in there as well. Let's get started. All right, so let's start with the obvious. The search module is the most annoying Divi module to try to style. And I recently added a search feature over on our blog right here. And this is actually using the search module, even though it doesn't look like it. So I really had to kind of hack it up and I'm going to show you how I did that and some tips and a couple of steps that you can take to really take your search module to a new level. I mean, by default, it's just really plain and boring. So anyway, let's figure out how to hack this thing. And I'm going to do that right here on a site. So in fact, let's just show you real quick what it looks like by default. It's not pretty. There you go. There it is. How do you like that? So that is the search module and it's kind of like in one piece. You see that how the button is tiny here and boy, talk about boring. It's a little different than this one here, right? So let's get to that and I'll show you and we're going to be doing this all within the module. So we're going to be adding some snippets of CSS, but in this tutorial in particular, we're going to be putting it directly into the module rather than like um, targeting a CSS class and putting it in the theme options like we usually do in our tutorials. So we're going to be putting it in here. So when I go to my search module and click on settings and then go to the advanced tab, open up the custom CSS toggle and these fields here is where we're going to be placing it. Okay. So let's start with um, a trick that I've been doing that I really, really like. Like I was saying, this is like one piece. You have the input field and you have the button. Those are like the two components, but they're like one piece. So I have a little trick that I do. And that's here in this first snippet. You can see that I say width and then I say calc. So basically we're doing a little trick. We're calculating um, with CSS. So, and I explain actually each of these things. See how I explain each line of the CSS. I do that all the way down through this tutorial. Anyway, so we're taking 100%. So take, we're saying width. We want the full width of this module minus 150 pixels. Hmm, okay. And this is for the input field. So we're saying we want this whole input field, which is basically, you know, it, it, this whole thing, it is the whole thing. 100% of it minus 150 pixels. All right. And you'll see exactly why we're doing that when we get to the button. So let's copy this first snippet. And by the way, if you're on YouTube, this is linked down below. Just go over to our blog and grab the snippets there. So copy that. And I am going to put that into the input field. Remember we're in the module, the advanced tabs, custom CSS toggle, and an in input field. I'm pasting that. So right now, you'll see a bunch of things happen. First of all, that width, it, it became 100% minus the 150. You can see that there's a, a space between the side here and then this side. That's that 150 pixels. Now I added a border to the input field. Now there is a border. Do you see this little border around here? Boy, that's an annoying border. All right, so let's go over here to the design tab to border. Now this little border, it's it has a little rounded corner and it's one pixel and it's gray. Look at that. We need to get rid of that. The reason we're getting rid of that is because that border goes around the whole thing. And I'll, I'll just make it really obvious. Let's make it a different color. See how it's going around the whole thing? How dumb. I mean, really. So I'm just getting rid of it. 
and we want it zero pixels. And then, like I say, we're kind of making our own separate input field. We're separating it. And I added it, I made it two pixels thick and solid. And then I made it um, DDD as the color, right? And you can make that whatever color you want. So anyway, that's the input field. I also made it rounded. See how I have it rounded? That's the border radius. I made it 50 pixels. You can adjust that to whatever you want. And I did add a padding left, and that, that is only because if I put a placeholder text here, so something like that, if we say search our site, I wanted some space over here on the left, and you'll see why in a minute. So now you can see that, well, this looks kind of funny because my input field is here and my button's here. Um, what's going on? So let's go back to our tutorial, and we'll go down to the next snippet. All right, so that was the first one. And again, I explain each one of those things. Now we're dealing with the button. And the first thing you'll notice here in the snippet is the width is 140 pixels. Hmm, so remember I said uh, the input field was 100% minus 150. That's because we want a little bit of a gap between the button and the input field. So that's what that's gonna do. It's gonna make it a 10 pixel gap. So let's copy this one and go over and put it into custom CSS and into the button here, right? So here it says button, so paste that. And there you go, our button got wider. It got blue because we added a background. It actually has a border, has a two pixel solid blue border, has a border radius, so it's rounded. And you'll see that I also added a transition effect and that's because we want we want to change the color when we hover over this, all right? So look at that. We've already dramatically improved it, but we're going to keep going. All right, so there you go. And, and by the way, you'll notice that I can hardly see the text. Let's go into the module, and I, I need to show you why we are using CSS because I honestly am so confused why Elegant Themes is doing this. The, the, the settings are all crazy. Okay, so a couple of them make sense. But this one down here, where is it? I think it's in button text, okay, button text. So here we have, it says button and border collar. Um, if I turn that on, it affects both. See that? I, I don't want it to affect both. So I just, I just leave it off because that way I have control over it. The only way that you can, I mean, if you have this on, even our CSS can't override it. It's very... I don't know, it's very strong if you wanna use that word. So I can't override the gray. Remember I had it gray for here and I had it blue for here. You just can't override it. So just keep this off. That's why I'm saying this thing is a pain to stylize, but again, I'm showing you how, so it's okay. All right, so I'm gonna go down here and make this 20 pixels. The I'm doing that to the the button text, which by the way we can make that white. We can we can change that. That's okay to do that in here. It's just this one up here, the button border and collar, or yeah, button and border collar. Don't don't do that one. Okay, let's go back into field because I want my field text to be the same as my button text. Let's make that bigger. And by the way, sometimes you might have to. It's kind of finicky. Sometimes you'll have to go in here to like. Uh, the button text and add some line height. See how it was kind of like that. It kind of acts goofy sometimes. So add your line height. And this is where I was saying earlier about adding that spacing to the side. Um, I just like to have it. It was way over against the side. That's why back here in my CSS, you'll see that I had a padding left. And we can adjust this to whatever we wanted it to be. So maybe you only want it 20. See what I mean? Without it, it's like way over at the side like that. So I just put that in there. All right, so wow, it's looking a lot better. But I want this button to change when I hover over it. So when you're here under button, go ahead and hover over these little controls and click on the one that looks like the mouse cursor there. See that? And that opens up the hover effect. So you can do this with CSS. So, so we have our regular and now we have our hover CSS. So go back to the tutorial and go down here and copy and this is an easy one, but let's just copy this. All I'm doing is changing the background color and adding a transition. So that one's gonna be easy. So that's when I'm hovering. So you'll notice that my text was white. 
And so now when I'm hovering, the background is white, the border stays blue. So I wanna go back in here, it was under button text, and make sure that I'm changing my button text on hover too. So I'll click that, then for hover, you know, maybe I'll make it black, see that? See that, it's like that, and then when I hover, becomes um, white with the black text, all right? And then another thing, you know, this is kind of optional as well. Of course, I guess all this is, but my max width, maybe you only want it to be 600 pixels wide, this whole search bar. See that? Or maybe you want to um, center it. See? So it's just um, really amazing what you can do with this when you actually can override. Honestly, that one setting was causing most of the problem. Um, but, you know, once you actually get in here and can just just override it with CSS and make it like a separating the buttons was kind of a key. Like, I think that just looks way better. So there you go. Okay. So now we are going to shift and show you how to build the search results page. So when someone comes here and types in a search, some kind of keyword, whatever they're looking for, we need to have a page that's displayed for the results. And otherwise it's going to look kind of terrible. So we can do that and we can do that in the theme builder. So I'm going over here to Divi theme builder and I'm just gonna add a template, go down to the bottom, look for search results. So click on that, then click create template. And if you're not familiar with the theme builder, I just highly recommend that you get familiar with it. Um, in fact, we have a course coming out on it very soon. So anyway, let's go ahead and add a custom body and then click on build custom body. So right now we're creating the template that is displayed when you type in a search. So the only way that we can accurately get dynamic results using Divi is using the blog module. Okay, build from scratch, add a row, and then like I said, the blog module. Okay, and the reason we're using this is because it has this really cool new feature. Here it says posts for current page. So that allows us to have, basically use this for archive pages. It works um, obviously for the search results page as well. So we're gonna turn that on. And when we have that on, basically it's saying that I am going to display the pages or posts that come up in the search results here in this blog module. And I can style those however I want. I can style this with the blog module. So maybe I want it to be a, a grid mode. All right, so these are just examples. These aren't my actual results, obviously. So I could, I could style this however I want, but I'm just gonna leave it as is for now. So let's save this template. Again, we have just made a theme builder template. So you're going to need to save it here. And then when you click this X, you're gonna also have to hit save changes here. Now later on, if you make an update, it'll, up, it'll save automatically. Anyway, so we have it made. We have it assigned to the search results. Now let's go test this thing out. So I don't really know um, what's gonna appear on my search results. Basically, this site has a bunch of tutorials on it, the ones that I use live. So I guess I'll just search for you know, Divi or something, and, and we'll see what comes up. I'll hit enter, where I should have did my, yeah, see when I hover, <laughs> there you go. All right, so it's bringing up um, all my pages that match the Divi results. So that's how it's gonna work. And if I had styled these nicer, you know, this would look a lot better. But anyway, that's, that's how it works right there. Um, so you type in the search and it comes up, it brings up that template that's made with the theme builder. And again, you could style this however you want. The, the things that I went over here in this tutorial with the snippets, those were the things that are just kind of beyond the normal Divi settings, okay? So obviously you could come in here and there's all kind of Divi settings for this. You know, feel free to style that however you want. I just wanted to show you kind of the main ones there, like like splitting up the, the button and the input field, um, especially that, that quirk there with the collar of the border and the button, things like that. But then, you know, I wanted to show you the search results page because 
I didn't want to just show you the search module without that because it's kind of important they go together. All right, so I'm also going to be doing a tutorial on custom post type searches. So right now, in fact, let's show you real quick. Right now, this is limited to posts and pages. All right, let's go in here. I'll show you what I mean. So down here under this exceptions toggle, see how it says exclude pages or exclude posts. So like, let's say I wanted this to just search for pages. Um, I could exclude posts. Or if I just wanted it to find the results for my blog post, then you could exclude pages. That would probably be more common. Um, and then you could actually narrow it down into um, post categories. Like if you didn't want, I didn't want this category to show. Um, so there you go. Then then when I search, you know, in that, in that search results page, it won't show pages and it won't show this category. So you can also, you know, kind of fine tune it there as well. And like I was saying, I'm also going to be having a tutorial that will allow you to narrow this down to any custom post type. So like, you know, if you, if you make any custom post type, maybe you're using our generator, which we just showed in a recent video, the custom post type generator that we have on our site. So maybe you're using that and you want there to be a search bar just like this, but you only want it to bring up results for that. Well, I'm going to show you how to do that. It'll just search for that post type. You'll be able to select it in the, in the module. And then when you come down here, you'll actually be able to come in here um, and select a search results page for that post type. So you could style it differently than your other one. So that's gonna be coming up, so look out for that one as well. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed learning how to customize and style the search module there and just have you know a place where people can come and search for things on your site. That's really helpful, and especially there with Theme Builder layout that's that's just going to really help your visitors as they're looking for whatever information you're offering it helps them to find it all right well we'll keep going here uh, we have lots of tutorials coming up and you know if you're subscribed this is the type of content you'll get so with that said we'll see you in the next video